Now it's time for our inclusive look into the latest progressive developments from here in Rainbow Unicorn Land. Because it's all about progression here in Scotland. It's fucking... It's getting beyond cancerous at this point, quite frankly, at the end of the day. We're 4% of the population, so you do the maths into how many out of that 4% are politicians. But of course, Sturgeon says here that the Scottish government as an employer is absolutely determined to increase the number of ethnic minorities within the organisation. They are underrepresented in the Scottish government, as will be the case for many organisations and employers. Just as it's important that we redress the imbalance in gender, imbalance of course because there's more men in certain sectors than women, but of course if it's a women dominated field, they're fine with that staying a women dominated field. But all top notch jobs, all boards, all all the fucking high end put on the, up on the political ladder needs to be equal. And until equality is achieved, make no mistake about it, you're gonna hear the repetitive bullshit that proclaims that we are somehow a sexist, misogynistic <laughs> and gender inequality is rampant. But of course, anyway, it's also vital that we do so for ethnic minorities. And the Scottish Government as an, as an employer is absolutely committed to doing so and committed to encouraging other employers to take similar action. Oh, you're committed to putting in ethnic minorities where they weren't before. I wonder why they weren't there before, Sturgeon. Could it be, of course, that there wasn't any that applied for these roles? Could it be that you're a racist? Hmm. Surely not, Sturgeon. <laughs> Nonetheless, this video is not actually about the latest instalment of the Chronicles of Leftyville, Rainbow Unicorn Land. It's more to talk about uh, something I've touched upon before, and that is, of course, the disingenuous element to the regurgitated, rehearsed speech that Sturgeon gives every single time she's conducted, conducting an interview, or participating in an interview, sorry, regarding Brexit and the will of the people and the second referendum and all that good shit. And, I can't, and then of course, with a smile on her face, she manages to say convincingly her version of events that if were in fact the reality, then of course she would have a point. If everything she said was went exactly the way she made it out to be, then she and her, the SNP in general, and anybody that voted to remain would have a fucking point. But there's a lot of things that she deliberately misses out. And she frames this narrative in a, in a manner that suggests that we were pulled out of the European Union against our will, quote unquote, and it's just the latest example of Westminster telling us what we can and cannot do and it wasn't exactly like that was it Sturgeon? As everybody may or may not be aware, if you're not from Scotland you will not be aware I wouldn't have thought of what she did before the referendum happened. Of course people that have subscribed to my channel have seen the video before where she, well, I'll just get it for two seconds about the EU referendum. The first is, how can you support independence and back Scotland's membership of the EU? Well, the answer to that is simple. I believe that independent countries must cooperate to tackle common challenges. Every member of the EU is an independent country working with others for the greater good. That's, that's not entirely true. And it sure as fuck won't be true if everything regarding the Lisbon Treaty comes into effect in the next few years, which you, like everybody else, never ever seem to mention when you bang on about how the, U the European Union is this utopia full of independent yeah, friends. And the second question is whether a Brexit vote will mean a second independence referendum. Well, here's what the SNP manifesto at the recent election said about that. The Scottish Parliament should have the right to hold another referendum if there is a significant and material change in the circumstances that prevailed in 2014, such as Scotland being taken out of the European Union against our will. Now I'm clear that if Scotland does indeed face that prospect of being taken out of Europe against our will, then that option is on the table. And then remember folks, 
just after the referendum happened, after she quite clearly, to a degree, blackmails her SNP supporters with the fear of losing the independence referendum if they vote to leave the European Union. She went on a tirade, banging on about Indie Ref 2, Indie Ref 2, and then of course she subsequently lost a third of her seat. And then she stopped in her tracks, put it on the back burner, admitted openly that it probably did play a part in the fact she lost a third of her seats, then started campaigning vigorously for the people's vote, where she really showed her pathetic, undemocratic true colours. And of course, if she got her wish and the UK decided to have a people's vote and it went in favour of Remain, then she wouldn't have her mandate anymore. So this woman who sits here and has convinced a multitude of people in the comment sections of every interview she conducts, or in fact just people here in Scotland, of this wonderful, well-spoken, intelligent nationalist that just wants what's best for Scotland and she just wants away from the shackles of Westminster. Are you not hearing yourself? She stated multiple times, including right here, that if the UK voted to remain in the EU, then she wouldn't have her mandate, but that would suit her either way. As this quite clearly showed, she was pulling a blinder. She managed to convince the people of Scotland at the time, or Sam anyway, I wouldn't say all, Sam anyway, that vote remain in order to get your independence. The idea, the premise for independence will never arise if you vote leave. So to Sam it may have looked, of, may have looked, of looked as a way to put two fingers up at Westminster. Tactical voting, they call it. When in reality the matter was, if you take a step back and look at it, what was going on? Well, she was trying her damnedest to play a blinder to make sure that we remain in the European Union no matter what. Because on the one hand, if the UK voted to remain, and everybody voted to remain because they listened to her tell them to, then lo and behold, we get to stay in the EU. And then of course, if it went the other way, which is the way we now see it to be, and we all voted to remain, supposedly, questionable, but nonetheless, and the UK voted to leave, she could then go on a tirade and repeat herself relentlessly, day after day, and it's wearing thin, considering this video still exists, but yet she pretends it doesn't. You can't sit there day after day and talk about the fact that Scotland voted to remain whereas the rest of the UK didn't and therefore that gives you justification for a fucking second referendum when you played a major role, I would assume, in the reason that it went the way that it did, supposedly. You talk con continuously. Time after time you work these sentences as if we were dragged out against our will and you've not once acknowledged that this video exists. It's fucking manipulative, to put it politely. There's a lot I would like to say about this woman. I hate's a strong word, but I am on the verge of resenting this... Anyway. But to be clear, that situation only arises if Scotland votes remain next week. If Scotland votes to leave, then that premise for independence doesn't arise. So I'll be voting remain for a variety of very good reasons. Access to a single market of more than half a billion people, free travel across Europe for all of us, and for the hugely important workers' rights and social protections that being part of the European Union guarantees. But if you're basing your decision and what it means for independence, let me be very, very clear. The only sensible and logical vote is one for Scotland to remain in Europe. If Scotland votes to leave, then our immediate future will be one inside the UK but outside the EU, at the mercy of a Tory government led by the likes of Boris Johnson, which is even more right-wing than that of David Cameron and George Osborne. So I ask you to... ...disavowed themselves from the right wing, because remember folks, it's all about progression and inclusion here in this fucking phony version of Rainbow Unicorn Land. Vote remain on Thursday because it is in Scotland's best interest. Or she'll repeat herself constantly saying that the people of Scotland voted in 2014 to remain because they want to remain part of EU. And that was the main reason, that was the fucking driving force behind the referendum not going the way that it should have gone. But then, when in reality the matter was, that obviously would have played a part but their white paper said that if we voted to uh, leave, we would have immediately gone for trying to reapply to the EU. So they acknowledged themselves that we would be out of the EU, but they never seen it as a problem until, of course, Spain threatened to veto as being able to rejoin. But let's not beat around the bush here. 
And the main problem with 2014 is the same problem we have now. And that is that we wouldn't be able to keep the pound. But she constantly tells you that we would. Oh, yes. <laughs> ah, wow. Her mandate was activated, or was on the verge of being activated, because of her manipulating and ta using tactical votes to get us in the position that we're in. But to the untrained eye, it looks as if that tactical voting was done solely to get us a second referendum, to get us to leave the UK and rejoin the EU. But she tried that, and it fucking failed. Hence the loss of seats. So... It's pretty obvious, as it's been for the longest time, that she's an EU mouthpiece being paid heavily from somewhere, and she's masquerading herself as a Scottish nationalist. And these disingenuous fucking interviews that she seems to wrangle herself into allow her to come off in a better light than she deserves, if I'm honest. Anyway. It does illustrate the case for Scotland being independent. Because we don't have the ability to decide for ourselves in Scotland whether we are members of the European Union or not, we find ourselves in this uh, you know, anti-democratic position of having voted to stay in but being taken out. With all but if you're basing your decision on what it means for independence, let me be very, very clear. The only sensible and logical vote is one for Scotland to remain in Europe. If Scotland votes to leave, then our immediate future will be one inside the UK but outside the EU, at the mercy of a Tory government led by the likes of Boris Johnson, which is even more right-wing than that of David Cameron and George Osborne. So I ask you to vote Remain on Thursday, because it is in Scotland's best interest. Their independence referendum in Scotland, well, if, if you think back to 2014 when we had the independence referendum, uh, the campaign argued against independence, the premise of their argument was that the UK was a, a partnership of equal nations, that we all had an equal say. There was also an argument in that referendum that if Scotland became independent, we'd get thrown out of the European Union and have to reapply for membership. Fast forward four years and Scotland's interests and voice within the UK is being ignored. We voted not to leave the EU and yet we face being taken out anyway. And that's But to be clear, that situation only arises if Scotland votes remain next week. If Scotland votes to leave, then that premise for independence doesn't arise. Their mind. Okay, so and okay, fast forward I, to yes. 2016. Brexit yeah, vote. Well, let me answer. Just okay. let me answer that part of your question okay. because Scotland in that Scotland in that referendum, of course, didn't vote to leave the EU. Mm -hmm. We voted to remain in the EU. So if there is an opportunity, and I don't know whether that opportunity will arise for Scotland to reaffirm its view there, then yes, okay. SNP MPs would vote to take that. But, so I ask you to vote remain on Thursday because it is in Scotland's best interests.